Welcome to yes, the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee's November 20th, 2018 version. <laughs> Hope you'll join me in pledging allegiance to our republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> okay, before we get started, I wanted to highlight that we're only going to be talking after we gain recognition from the chair, and we won't be talking uh, otherwise, okay? I appreciate that. Um, now on to our schedule, which is uh, old business, the town website schedule, the BUDCOM meetings. As you know from our last meeting, uh, Mary Louise Wolsey kind of made us big mountain out of this anthill, and uh, I subsequently had endeavored to get it accessible from the town website, only to discover that Christina, the town manager's administrative assistant, had already took a copy of it from Hitler.com, made a PDF version of it, and placed it on their website. I did offer them uh, an HTML version, which would not have to be updated regularly to save them time. Uh, that was rejected by town management, and uh, they like the process the way it is, and uh, I, I think that everything is satisfied uh, from everyone's point of view. But it does point out to those who are confused on the matter is that the budget committee does not have control of what's on the minutes and agendas. That's our management's final decision, as I always understood it to be. Uh, and uh, I think rightfully so. They control the, the, they manage the website, they manage the town's assets, the website is a town asset, so it's appropriate for them to make decisions as they see fit on that. So is there any questions or comments on that? Thank you very much. Budget committee, schedule and content and organization. So here we have on the monitor the budget committee's meeting schedule. And before I begin, is there any questions or anything on this or things needing clarification? The date of the Budget Committee public hearing? Yes. As you can see the public hearing is scheduled for January 15. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Now, I know there was some discussion at the, at the Selectman's meeting last night on this, uh, and that was really related to the public hearing snow dates, and I've gotten a lot of um, questions about this on the side, which I haven't addressed because it's like, Minutia. But the bottom line is this. We can call a public hearing on the 15th. That's the final day for calling a public hearing. If we need to uh, continue the hearing to a time and date and location specific, we can do so at that hearing. And we don't have to send out a new two-week notice. So the thinking was, as I explained way back in May, that we have a public hearing on the 15th. If it snows or we have a blizzard, then what we're going to have is a problem. So we need to have a, uh, a quorum of people come in here so that we can continue the hearing until a snow date. Okay? So how do they get in here if it's a blizzard? And that's where Mike Pluck comes in. He's got heavy equipment. And he, <laughs> <laughs> and he has agreed to pick up a quorum of members to come in, convene the meeting, and then continue it to a date specified. The reason there are two snow dates in here is because we don't know what the weather forecast will be at that time but we will on the 15th, and we can then pick one of those two dates as the best date to continue on, okay? Hopefully we won't have to use them at all, okay? So any, anything else on public hearing? Okay, great. All right, uh, you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> on to the, uh, the schedule. Um, I did uh, ask if there was anything missing or whatever, and it turns out as I was reflecting on it in my meditations, I discovered that we don't have insurance in here. Isn't that interesting? And we also don't have capital outlay in here, I might add, as well. So um, we need to fit them in somewhere. And also, uh, in speaking with Regina, who has gone recently, that's why she wasn't here at last week's meeting, she went to, the, uh, to an NHMA conference, uh, two-day conference in Manchester, I believe it was. And uh, she got a lot of material there which she would like to present to the Budget Committee and I thought it appropriate since the NHMA dues that we pay is actually paid under the insurance line item 
I know that sounds like an oddity, but I can explain why it is later if you want. Uh, I thought it was probably most appropriate for Regina to do a presentation on NHPA conference when we deal with the insurance. Is there any problem with that, guys? Okay, nope. great. So, go ahead. Where are you going to put the insurance? Well, that's, that's the next question. All right. Um, as you can see right now, we've got uh, on November 28, yeah. we've got a considerable number there, and there's probably not room for much more. Mm -hmm. And it's possible, because these ones on the 6th, the items on the 28th and the 6th were once all in one meeting. That's where they were last year. Yeah. I subsequently split them, up, split them up a little bit because I had gotten feedback from various members that they planned on drill, doing a deep drill down on some of these topics. So I split it into two meetings so there'd be enough time for people to express their, their views and questions. Um, we could possibly throw it on to uh, the 6th. That might make sense. So we could put it on to the 18th as well because the likelihood of us having town money one articles on December 18th is pretty small. So I think Regina would probably like to have a clean meeting on that. Yeah, that would be fine by me. Um, any thoughts on Anybody else? Putting it on the uh, 18th? Sounds fine. Okay, everybody? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so both of those items, and I guess we'll put in uh, capital outlay on that as well, huh? I have uh, on the um, 6th, I have the the, all the town funds. I spoke with Chris, Christy this, uh, this afternoon and she acknowledged that she'll be producing the, that list of funds for us and also the fixed assets as you know it was a bit topical at a previous meeting that Christy and I need to meet and discuss the overall of that uh, and Christy acknowledged that we have yet to schedule that for her and I to do but we will do it so that's uh, pretty much the status on that. So, um, December 18 for those two items, or three items now. Okay, uh, any other questions or thoughts or rearrangements of our schedule? Great. Uh, next on our agenda is information requests. And as you can see, we have uh, canceled a few and blah, 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 but these are the ones that were pending and have subsequently received. We received the police Chiefs Association study, I guess, NH COP wage study, I guess they're called NH COP, I don't know why, but whatever. Um, you all got that, right? So can we consider that satisfied? That request having been satisfied? Yes? Yes. Thank you. The uh, detailed hardware support maintenance I just discovered, you know, I, I believe it or not, I turn my computer off from time to time. I got an email from Rich Sawyer uh, a little after 3.30 today. Um, and so I did receive something I haven't distributed yet. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Since that was actually my request, I haven't really validated whether it's uh, responsive or not. So I'll just label it as not yet processed. And we'll move on. Uh, outside agency detail report we got from uh, Christy, right? And is that satisfied? I think so. Yeah. Brian, I believe you were the primary motivator on that request. Yeah, I'm in the, <coughs> in the process of reviewing it, but it uh, we got the information. Yeah. Should I consider it satisfied, or you want it to continue to be well, processed? Input satisfied. If you want, I don't know how much okay. more we're going to get. Okay, pay difference between the previous and current park rec department heads I haven't received yet, still pending. And the default budget uh, is still pending. Uh, I did have a conversation with uh, Jamie and Christy um, two days ago. Yeah, two days ago. Sunday? Sometime You're recently. I've <laughs> <laughs> been so busy dealing with all these things going around that uh, I kind of lost track of time here. But anyway, very recently I talked to Christy and Jamie in, in Christy's office, and uh, I was assured primarily by Jamie that they are working expeditiously on producing the default budget and uh, that I should expect it um, 
probably in, I guess, the first week in December is when they're expecting to bring it to the Board of Selectmen. But that is not a certainty. It's merely a probability <coughs> of expectation. So uh, that still is pending. Are there any other additional information requests that you would like to add to this list? I'd like to ask a question. Mr. Moore. The request that I had, you might have it on the MIRA, which I don't get. The, the request I had about the association wages. Yeah. And, and last week we talked, well, the HMA isn't it. We talked right. that. So they would say, well, we'll still be holding and get and going to get the hopefully the right information. Have we got that? Which one again? When the we outside agents? The outside agents. No, well, I mean, both the police and the fire department. Mm -hmm. The request was that we could compare the structure and the salary ranges between towns. Are we above average? Are we below average? Where are we? So we can make some sort of careful analysis on making sure, number one, teachers, policemen, mm -hmm. firemen are properly paid, and then we, we could, could make another thing as other things come up, how much money we do have and do not have to do things. Well, what we have and right now, David, is uh, on this list, and the comp uh, compensation uh, study, or excuse me, the comparison study, uh, we had previously canceled that request. Uh, it was initially responded to with an NHMA wage comparison study, Correct. which we as a committee decided was uh, an in inadequate source of information Correct. by their own admission. And so we canceled the request for both fire and police from that source. And uh, everything we've requested, I believe, is on this list. So, so my question is still, where, where is it up there? It isn't up there, is what I'm trying to say. But you just said you just did it. We've got everything we've received, so I thought I heard. Everything on this list is everything that I understand we requested. I've gone through this every meeting, you know, in terms of what the li whether the list is accurate and so forth. And uh, it's not on this list. What am I not getting, Brian? And I think the answer the chairman is trying to give is that we got the list. We didn't like it, yeah. but I'm not so sure we're going to get any more. That is the list I requested. Well, no, I understand that. But remember, we talked about municipal resources, which is a totally separate thing. Then the NHMA gave their, whatever you call it, their survey, which involved three or four towns, which we would I agree with. And what then I at, think, the, at last week's meeting, you asked me, and then you got involved. Right. Did you get what we asked for? And my answer was no. And I, my answer still is no, but I think as the chairman's alluding to, outside of somebody doing actual legwork, which somebody could do, I don't know who else is going to give us that information. The, the, Mr. The, the, Warburton is correct. That information is not readily available. Um, and I agree with you, by the way, but just... We, 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 I suppose we could demand to, to have it produced, but it would be a considerable amount of work on, on somebody's part to do that, and I'm not sure that the committee wants to make such a demand. I do. But if you do, then, then we will make a motion and discuss it. There would have to be a committee decision. It has to be a committee decision yes. to be able to get people to respond to a no, reasonable no, no. request well, that was already made. And we get the question of whether or not it's reasonable enough for us to make it. Um, the other requests were done by individual members, and that was fine because it was perceived that it would not require a lot of work on the part of the person we were requesting it from. What difference does it make how much I work just explained it is if it's, it a needed, if it's a needed piece of information? Because if the information is readily available uh, from the person we're requesting it from, then there is no meaningful associated cost to its production. However, if we're going to impose uh, some meaningful cost to produce the information, then I believe that we're going to need a formal committee decision on it. I thought we had already agreed with that last week. And I also thought when you and I talked before this meeting, I was very clear in what I asked for, and you didn't, didn't give me that type of an answer, that we have to vote on it by committee. And now it looks like if they need to do work, of course they need to do work. We're here to do work. We're not getting paid to be here. But we need this information to try to understand. I don't care what Dave's because amount of work. If you go to the school, like I said earlier, the schools don't like, for example, my son was working down in Massachusetts. They have a thing for all the teachers at every school, grades, ranges, how many years you teach, what you were teaching in high school, junior high. And it's all the standard procedure. It's a piece of, they keep it up. Now, you're not getting any individual person's amount of money. That's what I was asking for, just those ranges. And other people even said last week, 
if you were the chief, you darn well know what the exit is getting, you know, darn well what Portsmouth's getting. Yeah. That's my question. And I don't see the fact that if it takes a little bit of work, how else will, can we be, make a decision, analytical decision, to come to a right answer if we say, well, gee, that's going to take work to do that. Well, why are we even here? Regina. I don't understand what this is supposed to help with. Like, you can go to any town's annual report and find out what all their officers that you can compare to the Hampton if you want. I don't think that comparison exists, but some people do, then they can go. But I'll tell you right now, if you go to towns like Rye, Exeter, all right around here, Seacoast towns, go up to Laconia, it's, it's comparable. We had an MRI study done, which was an independent resource that I guess the budget committee for some reason decided they didn't want to look at. I do. Well, why is it canceled? A, I don't know. No, it's not. It's satisfied. Oh, all right. So it's satisfied. So that didn't help you out at all? Oh, if I could, let me just explain, Regina, because you weren't at the last meeting. This request is not for union positions. The request that David Morrow and I were talking about were for non-union high-level positions, which are within each town and municipality. We have no control over contractual things. If a captain in Portsmouth is making so much, we understand that. But what Dave was trying to do was get a baseline for, especially those towns, which I found interesting, in the communities that were presented by, like you said, the NHMA. Right. I don't know where they got those towns. To David's comment, and I, and I agree with you. I'd support you. I just I think we just have to look at a time frame. I think we do need the information because it, it gives us a chance to validate whether we have the right Thing going on or maybe like I said last week are people overpaid are they underpaid or what's going on with the salary structures there's a lot of talk in the state on all kinds of boards so I agree with what you're saying but I don't know do we want it done by January 1 do we want it done by I would think we'd have to have it done by January 1 in order to make an intelligent decision on the stuff we're looking at we're looking at whole stuff all across oh, I agree all, with of it. all of the expenses yep. Yep. All, think all of these questions on this list uh, were acknowledged and, and put on there uh, because no one objected to asking for it as the committee. So it was basically a consensus uh, exercise of getting it on this yeah. list. Okay. If you want to put that particular request on this list, I'll do so if there's no objection. Is there an objection? Are we going to take a vote on it? No, I just want to know if there's an objection to doing it. Yeah, I am. All right, there's an objection. So therefore, uh, I will not put it on here because there's no consensus. If you so want, if you want put it let on me finish, it? please. If you want me to put it on there, I'll be happy to do so by a majority vote. Well, then I make the motion. Please specify your motion. To request the information I answered earlier in reference to the pay scales for surrounding towns, such as, it could be other ones, Portsmouth, Exeter, Rye, Seacoast, to see where we're salary comparisons. Are we above pay, below pay, or reference into the request was particularly at the time of the police department and also the fire department. Portsmouth, Rye, Exeter. Yeah, the surrounding towns, they're around us in Northampton. Well, that we, want, we need to be specific when we make the request, so. I think Dover and Durham are extremely important in that request. Then add them to it, please. Okay. I Portsmouth, second his motion. All right. Portsmouth, Rye, Dover, Durham, Exeter. Exeter. Oh, you can add Seabrook in there. Seabrook. Northampton. Yeah. Northampton. All the surrounding. Greenland. Greenland. Portsmouth, yeah. I think it's important. You want to add Portsmouth? Oh, I think yeah. we need Portsmouth, yeah. And who's supposed to complete this study? Nine, nine municipalities you want comparative on, correct? Correct. Okay. And, and who are we requesting this of? Requesting it of? Yeah. We're requesting it from the heads of each of the departments, such as the police chief, for him to get that information compared to other things, because people talk and hear, well, we make more than we make less. I don't have any Police department, at. you mean police and fire? Police department and the fire department, two okay. departments. Okay. Those are the two I, we're talking about. Is that your motion? Are we capture please. it now? Please, yes, okay. it is. And we have a second. Is there a discussion? Uh, <coughs> Mr. Frank. May, uh, in my opinion, strictly an opinion, I think that the information that's being requested is somewhat enormous in trying to gather, you know, because most of that stuff may or may not be posted. You've got information on salaries based, may include overtime pay, work duty pay, whatever. Okay, so I, I don't think you can 
really equate getting the proper information in a timely manner. It's very time consuming for someone to do that. That all I'm saying. All right. Any other so, I, and and just let me finish. Sure, sorry. Bit. I don't think it's going to add to anything here because I think if, if I understand correctly, the police department when hiring a new recruit, it's a comparable weight scale within the surrounding community. How do they? Well, then that's what I want to know. What are the complaints? David, 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 David. So, Frank. It, it, that's that's all. I'm okay. Not, I just think it's 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 a exercise in futility. Any further discussion? Mr. Ladd. I would add that in order to get a fair comparison, you'd have to drill down into the benefit packages of each community to get the total cost of a position, the number of hours work, the duties assigned, which could be comparable or different. It seems a fairly complex gathering of information that might require an enormous amount of effort. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes. Mr. Moore. I find it hard to believe, because I worked in the living with insurance, we knew our salaries, all the benefits, they knew it for every person, for every range and all that. I'm surprised that the financial department, for example, if it is in the town of Hampton, that they wouldn't have the information of what it costs for the police department, for the benefits they have, for the vacations they take, for the regular salaries that they have, not getting to an individual, but the ranges. And also, when you get in with this, and you had things that were going on in the Massachusetts State Police, the people making a quarter of a million dollars because the captain was working $100,000 overtime and stuff like that, crazy stuff. So how did the people get a hold of those numbers and whatever number? My point being, in reference to this, I find it hard to believe that we don't have what it costs for the average member of the people that we have here because we pay, we pay health benefits, we pay retirement benefits, whatever they are. You have the regular pay for overtime. That should be a standard thing that's carried on behind the scenes, I would interpret. I'm here right now, we don't, but yet how on the other hand, this gentleman across from me just said, well, the police department makes comparisons to other sick towns, which is what I thought I just asked for, but just said to me, they get comparisons, but they don't have the comparisons. And I'm getting lost mm -hmm. in this process. Could you explain that to me, please? Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. Everyone understand the motion? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Mr. Warburton, Mr. Pluff, and Mr. Morrow. All those opposed? Mr. Ladd. Ms. Barnes. Ms. Barnes. And Mr. Frank. And so the motion fails because it's tied. Any other information requests? New information requests? Okay, so we're satisfied with this list as it exists now, correct? We've updated it accordingly. I don't know if I'd use the word satisfied, but I'm... I mean, as a committee, we're I'm satisfied. able to say, as a committee, we have received the information. I don't think the statement we're satisfied with the information is, but I agree with you, in concept, right? Well, which one are you not satisfied with? I, well, I, don't, no, I, have this I don't even know if we should use the word satisfied. The, the request came in that not necessarily we agree with everything in them. So oh, I right. No, no, no. Yeah. Satisfied means that it is, it is responsive to our request. That, that is to say, our request has been satisfied, right. not the contents of So it's useful and doesn't necessarily mean it's right. <laughs> well, it's useful, but it may not be helpful. Yes. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So we're done with uh, information yeah. requests. Uh, HamptonBud.com. Uh, continues to be updated, uh, and you'll note that there's a new menu item on HamptonBud.com, and it's, uh, I want to make this not so small here, or big, I should say. There we go. Help. Mm. And what I've done here is uh, I've created a uh, five videos which actually describe they're helpful, hopefully helpful videos, which actually describe how to use the various pages. A lot of people are asking me questions, how do I get this, how do you do that kind of thing? Uh, because of the sophistication of the uh, TurboTab HTML table. So I put those together, so hopefully I won't have to answer the same question uh, five or ten times. I also gave a little background here in terms of what HamptonBud.com uh, is all about. 
because some people like to cry about not being an official site, so I call it out, but it comes as a personal site, funded and developed by me. Right. And I explain it, and then further, I, there actually is something of a history, so there's a brief history there as well, I click on the button, you'll see it. So, I'm sure everyone will enjoy watching or reading that. Uh, okay, so that's all I have to say on the bud.com right now. Any comments? Okay. Uh, new business, uh, Police Chief Sawyer Ethics. As you all know, Police Chief uh, I spent, uh, uh, well, I sent you all snippets of the uh, comments made at the Board of Selectmen's meeting last night. Uh, and I also sent you uh, a copy of the uh, PDF document that he had sent me last week. He sent it to me on Thursday. I did not receive it until Friday. Uh, not his fault, not my fault. That's just the way it is. Believe it or not, I do not have my computer on 24-7. So I start on Friday, and uh, at the bottom of that, uh, email. He asks me or invites me to call him uh, if I have any questions. Now, as you know, I cannot talk directly to the police chief because of the protocol. But since he gave me the invitation, I called and left a voicemail for him. Okay, because I did have questions. I did not share the communication that he sent to me with the body as a whole because, well, two reasons. I didn't think it was appropriate, and I wanted to ask, get certain questions answered first. And since I hadn't heard from him back, uh, I did get a, a voicemail from him uh, about 3.30, but I shut down about 3 o'clock before these meetings, so uh, there was no time to follow up with him on that point. Uh, so that's why I didn't share it with you guys. But after last night's uh, comments, I, I felt that some of you committee members may want to know about the more details because it was addressed to the chairman of the budget committee. And I wanted to explain why you guys we're not shared with that document because, again, I didn't think it was appropriate. Uh, the question of ethics has been raised by the chief uh, regarding two elected members of this committee. Over 30 percent of this body, their ethics are being challenged by the police chief. Uh, over 20 percent of the entire body is being challenged by the police chief. And thus, I consider the integrity of this committee to be challenged. And I want to point out that basically two main points. When it comes to ethical matters of whether or not one should recuse themselves from uh, a particular item, that is an individual decision. It is not a decision for the body to make. It's not a decision for the, board, uh, for the chairman of any body to make. If you have an ethical challenge, you have a a duty yourself to call it out. There is no law that dictates that you know we as a body can say you or you cannot speak or vote on a particular topic. There is no law that gives me as a chairman the authority to say no you can't speak or no you can't vote on a particular topic because you're ethically challenged. That's an individual decision. It's so up to their conscience, and only their conscience. Now, the chief has an opinion that there is an ethical conflict. Well, one of the questions I have for the chief, and one, if I do manage to speak with him again, uh, I will ask him if, I mean, these facts that he put forth were known to him months in advance of his attendance here with his police budget. If he felt there was a conflict, if he truly felt there was a conflict, why didn't he tell us or tell me prior to his presentation of the police budget? Why did he wait until after the presentation of the police budget? Because it leaves the appearance that he has a problem with some of the questions that may have been asked of him when he presented his police budget. So I have issues with this budget committee ever being challenged in such a fashion, or any member on it that will defend you all any one of you individually and the budget committee as a whole when it's being when its integrity is being challenged we do work and we work hard we try to do the right thing just as i'm sure other department heads are assumed to try to be doing the right thing we shouldn't be challenged as though we're not doing the right thing under the assumption that there's something wrong there is nothing wrong 
Now, where do you draw the line? If my wife gets a parking ticket, should I recuse myself according to the police chief's evaluation? If my son or daughter gets a fine for littering, should I recuse myself from it? If I get pulled over on a traffic stop and I'm given a warning instead of a ticket, should I recuse myself because I might be in favor of the police budget? Where do you draw the line? That is not clear to me. And I think it's probably not clear to anybody. So, anyone has any comments on any of this, I, you're welcome to do so. Are there any comments? Mr. Lapp. New Hampshire seems to be all over the place legally on what conflicts of interest are. Some decisions have said, even if there were a conflict, unless the vote of the member decided the outcome of the issue, it didn't matter. Other cases have held that a member voting who is held to be in conflict defeats the validity of the vote of the whole body. So my thought would be where this is a, a somewhat complex issue to consider referring the matter to the municipal uh, New Hampshire Municipal Association for an opinion as to whether or not there is either a conflict or the appearance of a conflict. May I? Sure. Uh, I believe the, the cases that you're citing refer to governing bodies, specifically land use bodies. In part, but it wasn't just land use. It can I, be any... I wasn't they, aware of other bodies yeah, in those, those yeah, cases. It's not just land use, but the bottom line is we have an avenue to seek expert legal advice on the issue rather than a month or two from now finding that we're into a, some kind of an unanticipated legal conundrum. So is there a desire for this body to request from the Selectman's Lobbyist Group known as the New Hampshire Municipal Association for a legal opinion on, uh, on this uh, opinion of uh, the police chief? I'm not getting a sense that we want to do that, but someone speak up if I'm wrong. I mean, I, Mr. Ladd is suggesting it. I don't mm -hmm. think he's making a motion, but... I think it's a good idea. Okay. Why not get the experienced advice and try to do the right thing? Okay. Then I, I'll make the motion formally. And I'll second it. Okay. Discussion? Mr. Warburton. If you go on the NHMA website, the town maybe get more than they're asking for because it absolutely says that anybody at any time, and meaning in me in this case, doesn't have to recuse himself at all. It is strictly land use boards. There's also a section under the NHMA for the selectmen's rep this evening to, to read that specifically states there are times that within towns that if somebody uses bullying tactics against members of a committee to try to sway their vote, to try to prove or to suggest it's a conflict of interest, and you just answered the question, I don't think we need any advice. It's, it's very clear that a recusal for an elected official, unless you're on a land use board, and we've seen it in this town where developers have been asked to take the majority vote, I, as a member, am not going to recuse myself. It's as simple as that. And I think for you to say that we are going to get legal advice when it's perfectly known fact that the issue is it's up to me, as the chairman has said. I think it's, uh, I think it's prolong prolonging an issue. I say we move on to what we're doing. I think the longer we drag this out, um, and I've, I've done research since last Thursday, um, I haven't slept since last Thursday, I so I, I don't know if I appreciate uh, your intentions because that's all we need is another lawyer. You go on the NHMA website, it specifically states what recusals are and that the person asked to be in recused has the right to say yes or no, no one else. So I am not taking a position that you should not recuse yourself. I am taking a position as a member of this body that the body, and you particularly if you're what you represent is what the MHMA would agree to, get the protection of that opinion so this body doesn't have this issue kind of 
out there in the ether where people are going to come back and say, I don't agree with this, I don't agree with that, maybe you shouldn't have taken that vote. It just, I don't think the people have anything out there. That's where you're misinterpreting things. No. I don't think the people in this town are going to stand for it. And I don't know who you've been talking to, but as far as I'm concerned, the question should be asked of me, what I plan on doing, not a committee. I, I'm in this memo, not you, Mr. Ladd. I know. Okay. But so I'm a member of the board that is drawn into again. this because okay. we, I'm not What totally do you mean drawn certain. into it? I'm the one being asked to recuse myself. Right. And what I'm telling you, the only thing I'm going to say is for 40 years in this town, I have been fair and impartial. Mm -hmm. I plan on voting and discussing, as the chairman has alluded to, mm -hmm. on the police budget. So I'm against this totally. I don't think we need another opinion. Mm -hmm. I think it's just another way of sideswiping what really went on. All right. Uh, Regina. I just want to say that I think that what you said in the very beginning is exactly true, and that it's up to the individual. So let us just wait till we review the police department budget and let Mr. Warburton make his decisions then. May I just say something, Mr. Moore? One more time, I'm confused. <laughs> so on. I, I was at the meeting last two weeks ago, whenever the time period was, when the police chief and the fire chief were here. All the questions that were asked at the meeting, from my perspective, I thought there were good questions and fair questions to everybody there. I also remember many times that the chairperson has reminded me and trying to educate me that we are allowed to ask any question we want. In reference to the budget, we can ask any question, and it is the person sitting at the head of whatever department we're talking to to answer our questions. I'm, this is my third year sitting here. I've never heard a question that I thought was off base or wrong. Actually, I thought some of the questions we have asked weren't detailed enough, and we haven't had enough information to drive things further. Hmm. So I, I I know it sounds like you kind of like me from what you said. I, I, you got to keep it to yourself. But I just said, I mean, for everything I saw and heard here a week ago, both for the fire department and the police department, mm -hmm. I thought was all well. The question is whether or not perfectly okay. The question I'm, I'm on the lost. table at the moment is whether or not we asked the unofficial yeah. uh, agency or entity called NHMA, right. which I is an unofficial that. entity, uh, a question of ethics. <clears throat> So, asking a lawyer about ethics. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, that's essentially the question. You go to NHMA with a question. Uh, Not asking a lawyer. Please, Bob. Well, don't take which, the shots. Please, then. please, Bob. Uh, which a question which has not been raised. I mean, the police chief did not ask a question about whether or not uh, a member or, or two should recuse themselves. He proclaimed an opinion that they should. So the question has not been raised. He's going to be offered his opinion, a non-lawyer opinion, the police chief's opinion. We're not being challenged with a question at all. Mr. Frank. Uh, I'd just like to say that you have a motion. That's right. Floor, we're working so on that. We vote. Yeah, we're working on that. Any further discussion? Okay, with that, the motion is to essentially ask a lawyer about ethics from NHMA, and uh, therefore anyone in favor, please raise your hand. Mr. Ladd, Mr. Moore, all those opposed, raise your hand. Mr. Pluff, Regina Bonds, Mr. Frank, and Mr. Warburton. So the motion fails. Any further discussion on Police Chief Sawyer's ethics? Great, thank you. Um, I met with uh, a new, uh, new, other new business, uh, which I'm going to bring up. I met with uh, Kathleen Murphy at SAU 90 today uh, when I went to pick up the SAU 90 budget books, where I was informed that I could pick up and did pick up all of the budget books for SAU 90 for this committee, which I will distribute at the conclusion of this meeting except for Frank DeLucas, who I was told he already had. <laughs> I further inquired, as I had on a telephone call with uh, Kathleen and Nathan um, uh, last week, Friday I believe it was, um, 
as I said, I get a lot of the stuff going on that I don't bother sharing with you, but until it's appropriate. <coughs> I had asked him about whether the school board had decided whether to finally put the, ta the tally votes on the ballot. He said they'd raise it to the school board. And of course, rather than me telling you what I heard today from Kathleen, I'll let Mr. Frank, who voted on the matter, describe it. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but I think Kathleen probably voiced a, a better opinion than I could. But the motion did come up, and we basically had a discussion, and uh, the discussion was basically tabled. So there was no vote. It was tabled. It, we had no vote. You had no vote. Okay. No vote. See? Kathleen told me you did have a vote. No, she was confused. I had uh -huh. a conversation. She was There's still more confusion there. How about that? <laughs> you, we are not alone. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's Frank's uh, interpretation. I want to point out something to you guys, which I found very interesting, as I pointed out to Kathleen. Every year I learn something new and I get a little bit more knowledgeable. Yeah, it's kind of a creeps over time, you know. And uh, I was talking to some people in town hall, and they pointed me to this article, which is the NHMA <coughs> article. And I know that it's not an official website, the NHMA website. But this is the NHMA website. It's an article that they all also printed in their so-called Town and Country magazine. Town and City? Town and whatever, yeah. Town and City, yeah. Okay. I think. Um, and here it is. We apparently have a new law, Frank, and everyone should pay, take note of this. The Budget Committee tallies on a Warren article. In chapter 246, HB 1392, amended a law and now it says that this year's amendment, in the second paragraph down here, as you can see on the screen, this year's amendment states that not only may the governing body choose to print the vote tallies in the warrant, a budget committee adopted under RSA 32.14, which we are, may also choose to, quote, require that the tallies of its votes be printed next to the affected article. Keep reading. <coughs> well, I mean, that's the substance of it. Why don't we just read a little more? <coughs> Why not finish the paragraph? Note that because the governing body, not the budget committee, controls the warrant, the amendment does not authorize the budget committee to print the vote tallies, but authorizes the committee to require that the tallies be printed, i.e., the budget committee may tell the selectmen to print the budget committee's tallies, and the selectmen must comply. The budget committee may not require that the selectman's tallies be printed, only its own tallies. Note also that this authority is given only to the budget committee adopted under RSA 3214, which we are, and not to an advisory budget committee, which we are not. Thank you. So it appears as though we no longer need to say, please, please print our tallies. We can simply order it. Now, if the committee would like, I will uh, do some research and, and find the exact proper wording for a motion to require our tallies to be placed on the ballot. Is that desirable? Yes. Yes. Very much so. Is there an objection? You object, Frank. Okay. She would have surprised. Then, in that case, I will need a motion to overcome so Frank's objection. <laughs> Moved by Mr. Plus, seconded by Mr. Warburton. Is there a discussion, Frank? <laughs> mm, <okay. laughs> Anyone else? I, uh, I have no, no problem with this motion. Aren't they already printed on the ballot? Well, you see, that's the funny thing, is that the selectmen of the town of Hampton have for many years been transparent enough to print the tallies on the warrant. However, the school board has been reluctant, in fact, unwilling. No, no, that's incorrect. Oh, Mr. excuse Chair. me, when did the school board print the tallies? We don't. Exactly. We have that, so, but we no, are excuse not. Excuse me, Frank, like I am not done speaking. <laughs> you can have your chance yet again. But the school board, having been requested to by me and others, to, to, you know, raise the question, discuss it. Why not have that level of, why not meet the same level of transparency the town of Hampton's Board of Selectmen meets every year, even when the budget committee and the town selectmen are at odds with each other, sometimes even screaming at each other over the years. Still, the selectmen were transparent enough to put it on the ballot. 
why can't the school committee uh, engage in at least that level of transparency? That question has been raised over and over again for a number of years, and we keep being met with silence or more or less the description that Frank offered tonight. So I am done. Go ahead, Frank. Thank you. First of all, the school board is not opposed to that. Okay, we're not opposed to it. All right, and basically we all vote in unison. All right. So, to make it simplified, when we present the budget, we've never had an issue, nor have we ever been told by this board or any other board that we must have a tally. Requested, but not mandated. Now, I understand, if I read that correctly, that the selectmen are mandated, but I don't see where the school board is mandated. Would you like to elaborate on that? I would. Uh, it says, actually in the second paragraph, it says, uh, i.e., the budget committee may tell the selectmen. Obviously, it is referring to, and I haven't seen the actual law, this is the NHMA doing their legislative changes for the year from the state legislature, okay? So this is an opinion, okay? And I need to look at the law so I can make sure if there's any specific wording required. That's what the research is about. That's what the motion is for. Should I do the research for that motion? Now when it says, I, for example, the selectmen, uh, the, board, the budget committee can tell the, or direct the board of selectmen, the board of selectmen being a governing body, you say, and the school board being a governing body, I assume, I assume that the law treats them no differently. They just govern bodies. You know what bodies. the word assume means, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. Got to do the research. <laughs> and it's about to happen to you, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> so any further discussion on the motion that I should research the proper wording for this? Okay, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Everyone except me, who is Mr. Neutral and abstains, and Mr. Frank, who is voting. Oh, I abstain from voting. Oh, Mr. Frank abstains, so he objected to the actual request. He's now abstaining to the actual vote. Okay, we're clear on that, Frank. Thank you. Any other new business? <coughs> Mr. Frank. Uh, I thought you had a, a few other questions that you presented to... Uh Ms. Murphy? No. No, we had, we had arguments over uh, law and uh, philosophical principles and such matters that are not appropriate for this forum. Thank you. Discussions? Yeah. yeah. No, you said I, I, you had discussions. I had discussions, in, <laughs> I had discussions and learned about the tally votes, which was something that was uh, something that should be raised because I had discovered this in my research. If I discover other things in my research that would be appropriate for this body to con consider, then I will raise them at that time. But I have questions and discussions about law and principles and philosophy of governing with a number of people. And while they're generally very enjoyable, it's not appropriate for them to have them all take place at this committee. And, okay? and just, just to elaborate, there sure. are conflicting laws on the books. On what topic? On topics that you raised earlier today. Well, of course, if there wasn't, then we wouldn't have a basis for discussion. <laughs> so thank you for stating the obvious, Frank. Uh, any other new business? Okay. With that, I thank you all for coming, and we are adjourned. Oh, our next meeting, by the way, one correction on the agenda. Our next meeting is not Tuesday, November 28th, but it's Wednesday, November 28th. I printed that wrong on the agenda, but it's uh, correct on HamptonBud.com. So, Frank, we are adjourned. No, I thought we had to make.